Contestants number two. It's Team Serify. Right, same rules. You've got you've you've got fifteen minutes or right. less, so we can uh, keep on track. Is it, is it on here? It's, it's on, on here. Is. Yep, it's on. Um, we should say so. If, um, is that it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hey. Okay. Um, uh, my name's Mahendra Mahay. I think I spoke earlier. Um, I'm, I'm um, also project manager of a project called Serify. We're going to, it's going to be a team presentation. I'm going to do the first bit, and then I'm going to go off and continue judging the developer challenge kind of halfway through. Um, Stephanie Taylor, Neve Brennan, and Kevin Kiley, they're all going to contribute to, to the presentation. I'm doing the first bit, which is going to tell you what the project's about. So... Um, Actually, if I get it started. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, I can't remember the bills on this. Um, actually, before I do that, um, the project, Serify, in a line, is all about getting um, universities to engage with the Serif standard. Okay. Do you all know a little bit about the Serif, serif standard? Okay, kind of nods there, okay. Um, so um, the project is very much about how do institutions engage with the Serif standard, okay. Um, and uh, we feel that um, we, we have a methodology that we put a proposal into an eight-month project, finishes at the end of September. And um, uh, we have a methodology which we believe will help uh, institutions engage with a standard, um, and it's called Serify, Okay. Uh, there are four academic partners, um, University of Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth University, sorry, University of Bath, Queen's University of Belfast, University of Huddersfield, and we have a commercial partner, Thomson Reuters. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put some of the bills in this, actually, to save time. Okay. Um, actually, sorry. <laughs> so... Um, I want to keep things very brief. Um, what our philosophy was, uh, as far as the project was concerned, was um, institutions care about their business processes, okay? And they care about making those business processes better, okay? Um, so what we did was we, um, we got institutions to engage, um, into, engage with Serif by articulating their business processes. That was very much the methodology of the, of the project. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, so what we did was um, we went on site visits to each of these institutions, and we asked them to articulate four priority business processes in the research information management domain. Okay? Um, we also conducted... Um, you, uh, user interviews, which Stephanie's going to talk about. Um, and it was a fascinating two-day journey into the life of a university. Uh, we visited four universities, and they're all very different. It was very um, interesting and revealing. Um, and um, out of those visits, uh, we were able to focus on four business processes. I'm going to sort of summarize this. Benchmarking, uh, measuring esteem, um, pre-award management, and what was the last one? And insights exchange. So um, this is where our commercial partner came in, Thompson Reuters. Um, insights, does, anybody know, does everybody know what insights is? It's a citation, citation analysis tool. Okay. Um, so um, what we did was uh, we went to the, to the uh, universities. We asked them lots of questions. We asked them what the, what the priority business processes were as is, as they are now. And by, just by doing that, we were, they were able to identify things that are, for example, um, duplication. So, you know, the processes at, at the moment, they, they were able to identify, ooh, we, we, we do this here and we also do this here. And then we asked them to articulate what that process would, they would like to be. Um, and then, um, so in, in this time, we didn't ask, we asked them one question about Serif, okay? We were very much focused on their business processes. Um, then what we tried to do was um, we had a data surgery where we got the 
partners back and we try to drill down through these business processes to the actual data that underlies them. So where does the data come from, these business processes? And that's, once we started getting to the data level, that's when we started to get to the point where we could start engaging with the Serif standard. And um, out of that process, um, oops, um, I'm going to have to be very quick. Um, yeah, yeah, cut me off in a second. Um, okay, so um, um, as, as a result of that process, we, we focused on two business processes, measuring esteem and insights exchange. Okay, and I'm just going to be very quick, 30 seconds. Um, what we did was once we got the university's business processes, once we were able to drill down to the data, um, we focused on two business processes, uh, measuring esteem and insights exchange. Uh, we then took real data and serified it. Okay? We, 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 map, we mapped it to the serif standard, and that's what Neve and uh, Kevin are going to talk about. And um, it, it, uh, the idea of that is that then they would, uh, the, the institutions would see their data in a working CRIS system. And I'm going to shut up because I've got to rush off and judge. Yes. Okay. okay. Just a minute. Sorry about this. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so I'm going to talk very briefly about how we actually got the data. Um, we decided at the beginning of the project, building on work that my colleagues are already doing at TCD in the past, that we were going to put the users at the heart of anything that we did. So what the users wanted from stuff was the most important, and we'd start with that as the, the basis. We went around the four institutions that Mahendra mentioned, um, and we talked to everybody that would talk to us. Um, we did interviews with people, we got them around the table, we put charts on the wall, we let them write with post-it notes. We captured as much information as we could about what people wanted from the process that they got at the moment and what they wanted in the future. I'm going to talk quickly through two of the four that we selected, um, the insights exchange of data. Sorry. <laughs> um, we asked people how, they, how it was used, how is this information used. Um, you can see here the sort of um, highlights that we got from all four institutions. I did a kind of average of what most people were saying. Um, RAE requirements with this one came up again and again. The citation stuff was very important with RAE and comparison with themselves and with other institutions. We asked them how they collected data, the particular kind of data we were talking about. In the case of the insights engagement, it was a two-way process between Thomson Reuters and the institution. Um, they felt it required quite a lot of work on the institution's part as it was at the time. We also looked at user issues. What's wrong with what you're doing now? What don't you like about it? Um, and the main thing with this one was that there's a lot of effort involved in understanding the data. Um, and this was actually what a lot of the, the users were saying. We, we talked to um, researchers as well as research information management office people, finance people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and understanding the data and getting the standardization was key to them. We also had problems with the author ID, duplicates, and null fields. User requirements was where we said, what would you have in your dream case scenario? Um, standardization, certainly in the citation, was a, was a big thing here. Nightly updates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we put all this together to feed into what Neve and um, Kevin are going to be talking about next. The other thing that I'm going to mention is measures of esteem, which, which was the second of our four. Um, again, we asked how it was used. Our AE stuff came in heavily here. But with this, especially with academic researchers and with heads of academic departments and schools, personal reviews, promotions, all these kind of things that weren't necessarily outward-facing. This was a very two, you know, inward and outward-facing thing. Collection of data was lovely for this one. We got everything from uh, a note stuck in my intray to an email to more systematic things for um, RAE, some continuous tracking that was being trialled in preparation for REF, um, individual schools. This was as broad as the day is long. Everybody did it differently, even within the same institution. Um, user issues for this one, everything was too woolly, difficult to provide meaningful data. Um, citations alone are not accurate enough. How else do we get a more 360-degree picture of what we're actually doing in this area? 
use the requirements back to what they dreamed that they would like best in their, their kind of ideal way of working with this. Systematic again, capturing what's required, um, bringing as many different aspects in as they could bring into this. Um, Personalised audit tool was one I liked um, to be built into a room system so that they could add to, put things in and analyse what they were doing. Um, I'm going to now pass over to Neve to, to say what we did once we collected all this data. Keeping an eye on the clock here. Thanks very much, uh, Steph. So what we discovered with all of this was an extraordinary commonality across the institutions who knew this data is supposed to be wild and, and, and uncontrolled, yet we found the same issues coming out everywhere, and we were able to de devise generic processes that could be applied to this and uh, generic data models, which is what we're talking about. So the Thomson Reuters uh, set, it's another commercial output. It could fit into the constantly heard words of business intelligence, benchmarking, constant assessment and evaluation, and this is not going to go away. This is just becoming more and more common, internal, external, etc. So your in insights is an yet another offering from Thomson Reuters, which is your institutional citation report. We used it back in 2002, a, a version of it to populate our, our CRIS and thence repository. So you can pull this data into your repository and your CRIS, but it's not good enough. There are problems. Anna will tell you and other people will tell you this, um, that it's not good enough. The data is unsatisfactory. The process for exchanging the data is unsatisfactory. The view that they give of the schools and the research institutes and the clusters, not to mention the Scottish pools, it's just not there. It's not a view that the institution wants to see, but we can see a value in it. We want the metrics. We want the, if we can build in institutional affiliations and, the, and, and uh, make it, find the missing publications, then that could be very good. And also there's some very valuable information in there, particularly in terms of REF, which every, everybody's thinking about now. If you look at norm, um, normalized, uh, impact normalized per subject field, there is your contribution to your discipline on a plate, if you can get it in the right kind of format. So I won't even look at the as-is process. You can have a look at it afterwards. Queen's University Belfast are the pioneers in this area. They already took the pain and tried to go through the schema, the unsatisfactory schema that Thomson Reuters provided already. We really don't want to be spending our time working with unstandardized uh, data schemas that are just pertinent to a particular commercial organization. This is going to waste way too much time for every institution. So we have to standardize it. Queen's told us this. They told us that we wanted to automate it as well. And they told us about the missing fields, the missing data that should be in there. So we took those data, we devised a to-be process at our data surgery, agreed by all of our partners, and we took it to Brigitte Jorga from Eurochrist, she's based in Berlin, and she created the Serif data model for the Insights Exchange. And we drilled right down into the data elements in each institution for that. Over to Kevin, who's making it a reality. Hello. Um, I'm going to briefly take you through uh, from the data mapping t to um, XML generation. And uh, this is Brigitte's uh, Excel spreadsheet that, we, that was the basis for this. Uh, down the left-hand side, you can see all the insights uh, fields. Uh, here we have the, um, the serif uh, fields and the serif object that the, those fields reside in. Um, Next up, uh, she defined a lot of, of, uh, of roles and, and classes. Uh, these, these roles uh, de describe the, the nature of the link between, uh, between the, the serif objects. And uh, the rest of the, the page there is, is publication type, so I won't get into those right now. And um, this, is our, this is our list of serif tables, uh, serif XML files here. And here they're ordered in the, me in the order they should be imported to, to maintain uh, referential integrity. Um, so once you have it in that order, you just, you just work through these in that order. There's some good, um, good uh, reference, references on the web, on Eurochris. Um, is that it? That, well, this file is very good. They're at Serif XML um, um, specification. And there's also... It's also another one. And so basically you, you, you have um, sample XML available in that file um, and also the, the XML schemas are, are very useful. And we ultimately ended up with um, XML just like this, sent it off to Thomson Reuters. Now the next step is for them to uh, return uh, serif XML uh, containing the metrics, etc. And uh, I'll hand you back to Neve now. 
Thanks a million, Kevin. So we just wanted to expose you to some serif um, just as a bit of, you know, torture before your coffee. Um, let me just uh, go back into my um, PowerPoint uh, here again. And um, so... This is just not, it's not just an academic exercise. What we've ended up with is a data model for this particular process, but not just this process. It's a data model to describe the exchange of institutional uh, information, coding, and we'll show you what we've got. The data model, which we can add to the wonderful work that was done by Chris Poole, MICE, um, uh, Arius, and all of the other uh, RIM projects that are out there at the moment uh, modeling this. We'll be doing our full 360-degree data exchange with real uh, data from uh, University of Bath to start off with, where we have some guinea pigs there who've agreed to exchange their information. And um, the data coming right back into the CRIS from Thomson Reuters with all the additional fields and the metrics and so on that we've asked them to put in. They've agreed to put in multiple identifiers the researcher ID that we discovered, they simply don't, they don't automatically apply this within Web of Science. They're going to, they've agreed to, to try and, and, uh, and to make this uh, a possibility. The institutional ID, departmental code, the HESA ID, publication ID is their UT tag, and everything we can uh, apply a numeric code to, we've asked for that to be, uh, to be built into the model. The full metrics equals standardization of this process. The next steps, Queen's University of Belfast are great pioneers in this. We will ask them, and this will be a lovely surprise for them next week, to go it alone and to run this directly out of their own quiz. We we'll give them the model and show that, hopefully, that 3FXML can be generated out of a regular quiz in an institution, and we can do the data exchange with them. Thomson Reuters are working on automating the process, which is what our partners, Queen's, asked for. They said, we want this to be done by web services. We want an API. We want it to update it every night, and uh, we want the information to be institutionally accurate. Just on this, very quickly on the, uh, the last process, the measures of esteem, as uh, uh, Steph pointed out, it was one of the big issues that people were concerned about from RAE 2008. But we're all familiar with the assessment framework and guidance on submissions that came out in July, and it, where it said, practically in the first paragraph, esteem is no longer included as a distinct element in the assessment. So that's grand. We don't have to worry about that, do we? Actually... If you look into the tiny little 15% score at the very end of this under Ref 5, you'll see something that looks very like, oh, it says collaboration and contribution to the discipline. That looks a bit like measures of esteem to me. Impact, of course, is the huge area that, that's out there. So we've, we've, we've decided to take the measures of esteem that was in RAE 2008 and every other bunch of measures of esteem that we get our hands on not the impact part, and, um, and try and model that in Zerif. Because it is such a small score, all the more reason for this woolly, difficult process to um, be serified. Esteem process as is, from Arborist with the esteem process to be, automated the whole darn thing. Here's a view of some um, measures of esteem, but looking at what we did with the insights process, we discovered we could bring in more on collaborations and on impact and so on from this. So we've got a slightly extended model. This is it. We're using the MICE model because it's very similar to the impact. Esteem indicators just to prove that we made an effort to try and bring in everything. Please contribute and tell us more that we've missed. And this is the mapping to the REF5 of those. Finally, the issues. The processes need to be standardized. We know that. Most of the data is only available from narratives that, we've given, that we get from academics and so on. So this is incredibly time-consuming to put together. In order to reduce time and effort and, and to assist with verification, which is a necessary part of the REF, authority-controlled uh, lists, taxonomies, and definitions really have to be agreed by the community and built into the system. And in order to assist with that, the REF 2008 body of text and some of you people out there are really good at textual analysis, is a treasure trove of information upon which we could build a lot of our kind of standards and our, and our, our measures and so on. So finally, acknowledgements to the team and the partners, particularly to the uh, guru, to Brigitte Jorge from Eurochris, the Thompson Reuters Insights uh, Serify team in Philadelphia, who are quite extraordinary, uh, to Bowen Atira and the UK Pure User Group, who are, um, have and we have voluntarily given us those measures of esteem. Thank you very much. Have a look at our website. Thank you very much, Neve, Mahendra, Kevin, Stephanie. What a tour de force.